Hello and welcome to replay analysis for Jake's Apes X um, through the RLCD Discord. And I'm just going to go over a couple of basic things here before we get started. Um, so you're 14 years old, you have uh, Gold 1 in this 2v2 playlist you're on PS4, and use a I'm assuming PS4 controller. Basic stuff. Um, the reason I asked for that is just to get an idea of kind of how long you've been playing the game and uh, some things. If there's anything I can uh, help out with that. And uh, what you're looking to get out of this is to improve your positioning, how to hit the ball, and where to hit it tactically. So when I go through this replay, I'll try to take notes of how you could have hit the ball better. And also uh, improving your aerials. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, I'm going to focus on through this. And uh, we'll just get right into it. And I'm experimenting with this uh, pen software, so excuse me if uh, there's any technical difficulties throughout this, but yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. So right off the bat here, uh, I don't know why we started in the middle of the game, but um, obviously you want to flip uh, into this ball to the right instead of to the left. Try and get it towards that direction. You want to be hitting with the nose of your car, so as your car is rolling to the right, you'll be uh, kind of hitting it with the front part of your car. Um, but we just flipped the wrong way here. And here we can just go back, let our teammate go. Nice. Now we should be rotating back. You want to try and be aware of where your teammate is. Um, ideally, he's going to be coming in um, from the side. So ideally, he's coming in, wants to come in this way. Um, so we just want to try to look back. You can either toggle your ball cam or just uh, do an, a front flip towards the corner boost and you'll be able to see where he is a little bit better. Just make sure he's actually in this area and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, kind of lagged out here, but so you started turning in. Um, so we didn't really know where our teammate was throughout that entire thing. So I'll just check and make sure, because he comes flying in as well. Like the recording kind of like lagged out, but um, I'll just go back real quick. So your teammate was initially in your back right corner, as you can see from that frame. And so he's probably still in that area. So like when you turn for this, you want to be aware of where he's at. So you end up both going for this because we didn't know where the teammate was. And then you should let him go here. Also, try not to use all of your boost. We went down to five here. Um, if you go back, watch how we had 80 here, 90. And then if we knew where our teammate was and got behind him instead of turning, we'd still have 90. And then this aerial, we used like 50 boost when you really didn't need to. Just drive a little bit longer on the ground and then jump a little bit later. So here we still have 50. And then we started with zero momentum and then we used all of our boost. But actually if you just let this guy go, he has a better path to the ball. He's already in front of you. So he's um, a little bit better position to take this ball upfield because if you went you would have to basically cut around the ball this way, whereas he just has a straight line, so you should just let him go. Um, and if you do that, uh, then you just save all of your boost. Whereas if you both go for the ball here, then that's obviously double committing and that's no good. So just let your teammate go for the ball here and conserve your boost. And to save boost, just start flipping uh, in this direction. Like once he's taking the ball upfield, you can kind of rotate in to support behind him and uh, just start flipping. If you want to, you can grab this corner boost or you can just start taking these pads along the way and you can get like 36 boosts that way. 
Um, so it's multiple options. You just don't want to start boosting out of zero momentum uh, because uh, you just lose all of your boost for no reason. Like there's no one challenging, there's nothing happening, so there's no reason to waste boost. You only want to use boost when you really have to because boost is such a huge advantage. Um, so just be mindful of that and use your flips to gain speed whenever possible when you don't need to be using boost. So now we go back and get the corner. And you can start pushing up field a little, a little more here. You don't need to flip, but just kind of... Um, I think the video recording... That, this might be an issue on my end, I'm not sure, but it keeps kind of glitching out. Okay, yeah, we just kind of missed there. Um, I'll go back a little bit. Hopefully the recording stays good. And you don't want to flip here because you don't know what this guy's doing yet. You like, He might be hitting this ball, and if he does, it's probably going to bounce off the uh, side here and then come out. Uh, and it'll probably be behind you because if you're flipping, you're going up. So if you just stay here, you'll be able to respond to this better if he does make that touch. So uh, he does miss, and uh, but still we want to be a little bit further back because teammate is here. Um, there's no center coming right away, so we don't really need to be right in front of the net. Um, but we want to be a l just a little bit further back um, to help support what our teammate is doing. This, this is pretty pretty close, I would say, to being in the right spot, though. You don't want to be super far back. Um, so not too bad. But the reason I say further back is because teammates probably going to want to go for that because he doesn't know exactly where you are. And uh, it's pretty close, but uh, like you want to try not to be cutting lanes here. So like you're kind of should be in this lane right now. Um, so anything that comes over here like directly in front of the net, that's your job. But anything that's in this area, your teammate is covering because he's like right here. Um, so you want to be covering anything that comes outside of this or anything that comes in here. So I wouldn't be surprised if your teammate was trying to go for that. Yeah. And then you probably get scored on. Oh, close. But yeah. So you see how you're kind of encroaching on your teammates uh, zone and that almost caused you to get scored on so just realize that that space where the ball was going is your teammates gonna be covering that so just try to not um, it's kind of a preemptive way of preventing double commits is by trying to stay out of your teammates zones of coverage um, so just, you just rec try to recognize that and st make sure you're having good spacing with your teammate to stay out of his area of coverage and then try to get the boost as well when you um, make that touch I'll just go back for a second so it's fine that you get this I would rather you just take possession here though and just the ball is rolling this way so you can just come in behind it and then you can take it do a dribble on the ground doesn't have to be like on top of your car or anything but just dribbling in front or behind the ball and then just take it across here and get this boost that way you have possession and you have boost whereas what you did here was kind of a panicky touch like you just kind of slammed into the ball for no reason all this is going to do is hit it out here and then it's going to bounce out center and it's going to be a free ball for the other team so you don't want to do that instead you just want to take control and bring it around maintain possession so they actually scored off of that so you can kind of see what I meant was as soon as you boomed that into the wall they just had a free shot so you never want to try to avoid banging the ball like into the wall or just try to be aware like where the other team is positioned and make sure you're not giving them a free pass by doing that 
You can see it again here. Alright, 0 1. Teammate didn't go for kickoff, but it's fine. And then here, if you just flip into the ball, uh, just do like a side flip, then you can actually roll the ball up the wall instead of bouncing. Again, bouncing is bad because it's hard to maintain possession. Because now you have to get it on the landing. Whereas if you just uh, flip here, you can flip into the ball, get it rolling up the wall, and grab the boost at the same time. Okay, teammate. Alright, again, just you have a free ball here. I don't know why you turned away. Um, no one else is challenging, and your teammate just flipped past you. So if your teammate's not challenging the ball, then you should be getting ready to challenge the ball. So you should be turning immediately and taking possession here. But you're doing it rather slowly, I would say. Okay, this is a little bit dangerous, so you kind of want to make him give the ball to you and just hit it away. You don't want to be fully challenging this. Okay, teammate came in, which is good. This is also a little bit risky because he might get beat to this. Um, he's probably not going to have a shot, so if you just turn off to shadow, you can probably get a free possession here. Okay, he just missed, but he probably would have beat you to that, so just... Be aware, it's a little bit of a risky play there. And then this landing is not great, so... Yeah, I think if you went for that a little bit faster, make the decision to challenge that a little sooner, and then you can flip into it and just uh, take it up again up the wall. So the wall plays would help you out a lot here. Um, but anyway, so it goes down here, and you don't need to jump here, just uh, kind of stay with the ball, stay under it, and then if the other guy comes out to challenge you, you can just get it past him pretty easily. Um, and you can also steal the boost while you're here. Um, And here to score this, you would probably need to do like some kind of pre-flip. So you just start boosting immediately, and then when you do a side flip, your car will, uh, basically the momentum will take you this way, and you could probably score off of that. It's a little difficult, but that's something that maybe a higher level player would do. And... You could try to cut in here, again, a little bit risky, but if you take the angle in right here, you can probably beat him, or not necessarily beat him, but you'll get a favorable 50 because of where he is. If you cut in this way, it's probably just, if you slam it like right here, it'll just go out that way. There's not much risk of him getting it past you, but you just have to time it correctly. So if you start turning in already and then right here, of course, this guy uh, behind the ball is also an issue, so it's a little bit of a difficult situation. So uh, I think it's fine that you decide to shadow here. That's actually probably a better play. Because if you had tried to challenge him from that, challenge him from that angle, then it might have been bad for you. So that was actually a good play. Um, teammate should be back now. Make sure we're spacing. Okay. Teammate. We have not much boost here. It's a little rough. Okay. We're just kind of getting in our teammates' like space here. I feel like there's a lot of like panicking going on. So like here, just like let him go. And then you don't need to come out of net so far. You just stay back here and back post. And then 
he's trying to basically hit this and get the boost or whatever. Just let him do whatever he's doing. There's no one challenging anywhere near here, so it's fine. You can just let him have space with the ball and just be ready to come in um, if it gets past him rather than encroaching like all the way up here. It's not really necessary. And you'll see why in a second. See how you like backed up here? Like you can see that you kind of like went too far forward and then you like went back to the right spot. So if you ever try to like analyze your own replays, you can try and pay attention to stuff like that where you're kind of doing like these like weird movements. And that should tip you off that maybe you didn't uh, go to the right spot initially. That's something that you can watch out for. And then here, he's coming straight back, so ideally your teammate would actually rotate behind you here, and then you could go. Um, but that's not what he's doing, so he's actually going this way, which means he wants to make a play. Uh, so you should actually still stay back at back post behind you instead of coming out. Um, because if it does get past both of you, then no one's back to defend the net. And then their other teammate can just come in for a free shot. And it's a little bit unfortunate. Teammate should have this. So I would try to trust him and just stay again at back post. Um, like you're not going to be able to catch up to it and save it if this guy dunks him. So it's better to just stay back and try to play off of whatever happens here. So if the ball goes out that way, then your teammate will probably have it and get the boost and then you can support. Um, but just kind of let this happen. Try to, try to conserve your boost as well because we're kind of low. So there's not much we can do from this spot. So we're just going way too fast because we were trying to get in because the ball was in front of our net. But if we had just slowed down there and just kind of stayed back here, then we could make a play off of this ball. Um, but now we're kind of moving too quickly. So the ball now the ball is like directly over us, so we can't do much with that. And now we're on the other side of the field, whereas, again, we should just be staying at back post. There we go, rotating back post. And then you just need to be a little quicker to react to that and just immediately start going up the wall and try and get over that guy. But we were just a little bit slow on the upkeep there. Uh, okay. All right, can Ariel maybe? Okay. Just uh, a little more confidence, a little quicker on the aerials. You start going forward here. We want to be supporting our, our teams on offense. So you start going up. And you generally want to stay. It's not likely to get a pass, so you want to be staying on this side of the field. And uh, this guy's probably going to come in to challenge. So I usually, I'd say, kind of like halfway between the wall and this like center line is kind of where you want to be. So you can start pushing up. If you're all the way center here, it's going to be a little bit difficult if the ball gets past him. A lot of the times what will happen is someone come here and challenge, and then the ball start going this way, and it's going to be pretty close to the wall. So that's why I'm saying be more a little bit over here so you can come in and challenge that faster. But you can start creeping out center more when it when the ball gets closer to the net and it looks more likely like there will be some kind of pass. That's when you start creeping out to the center. So basically by being on this area you're covering both uh, options. Whereas here you're only covering one option which is the center. So if you had stayed again uh, kind of in this uh, zone then you can see how you would have been able to come in off of this and then uh, sorry get a free ball off of that 
but you didn't really need to go in to challenge that because it wasn't it wasn't really coming center yet. Um, show you again. So like it gets it past the one, but you're so far away that like this guy is gonna beat you no matter what. So you should just be coming in like to play off of this guy's touch rather than trying to come in and s score off of that. Not not gonna happen too far away. And there's not really any reason for you to be that close anyway. So it's better to maintain the control in the midfield. A lot of times second man role is gonna be to kind of be like this midfield warrior and make sure nothing gets past midfield. Whereas if you go in for a risky shot slash challenge here, um, teammates up, and so if it gets past you, there's no one to defend. Just be aware of that. We did get a kill though, so that's good. Got the boost. And then instead of backflipping here, again, this is like you would just take a slight turn here and then go up the wall with it. Um, so that would be the, if you're going to make a play there, that would be the, the optimal play. That way you maintain possession. Anytime you flip, you're adding recovery time. However many seconds it takes you to do this flip is time that you can't control your car and time that you can't contribute anything to the game. So just try not to flip unnecessarily. Like, sure, if you got a good backflip and send it like way up, f like flying, that'd be good. But a little bit difficult to do. Um, not sure what we were trying to do there. I mean, we did get out of our teammates' way, but it was a little bit, a little bit shaky. So, and probably what I would do here is a try to back pass it to him and just get a light touch I think you're trying to get a touchdown but yeah if you just pass it back here um, then he can just come in and make a play but it kinda worked to make a bumped uh, I see what you're trying to do here but okay it kind of worked out. I'll just not get that close. Um, like you don't need to be going super fast. Like someone is going to be touching this ball before you. Like there's three cars here. You don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. So I'll just be going a little bit slower here. A little bit further back so that you can react to whatever happens. Um, but just so happens that after this demo, the ball just kind of magically appears in front of you and you get a free shot. Um, but if anything else had happened there, uh, like if this guy jumped and touched it, uh, then if you wanted to maintain possession, be a little bit slower getting to that. Flip a little bit more to the left so that you can grab that boost easier. Teammates going. You don't need to back up here. Like he's getting a touch ideally. Um, so you can start heading out to support that. Oh. Technical difficulties. There we go. So now we're too far back to really do anything, whereas if we're coming up more around this area, we'd be able to support that a little better. So now we're too far back, but Again, if we had pushed up with our teammates' uh, initial offensive pressure, then we could just come in and challenge that because he's already heading back. Teammates heading back, so we should be kind of... Uh, like, what you're doing here is fine, but it's just a little... You can see how it's a little bit awkward because of how far back you were to begin with. 
Now teammates actually coming in a challenge, so we probably back off to the left. Okay. Teammate should score that. Nice. So our teammate kind of had to cut us in rotation there because we were too far back to begin with, but he did a good job to get that goal. Um, okay. Taking a little bit of controlled play there, I like it. So we got it past one, but our teammate is still in the corner for no reason, so they get a free goal. Or not. But yeah, that was not really your fault. I don't know why teammate was still in the corner there, but um, part of that might have stemmed from earlier where um, he actually was going for the side boost. We just play this again. Also on this kickoff, I would either cheat forward um, or get the big boost. You don't want to be doing anything like this front back motion is typically not good because that kills all of your momentum. So it's better to be going forward or to be getting boost in this situation. And then our teammate has a side boost, so you want to check and use ball cam or use your stick or something to see if he's going forward here, because we don't know, because we can't see him. So you want to realize he's over here and check to see if he's going or not. If he's not, if he's going back, then you can go. But otherwise, you should let him go. But this whole time, we don't really know where he is, so he's probably like just off to the left here, and he's probably was going to challenge this, but then we cut him off. So that's probably why he was stuck in the corner like that. Anyway, he makes a miraculous save. And then let him get this. Don't encroach on his space too much. Again, you want to maintain good spacing uh, with your teammate so he can uh, <coughs> take control here. Right now we're a little bit too close. And again, you can see how you backed off. So. You kind of realize your mistake. He may still has control. He's maybe for a pass. Um, if you come in, you want to make sure you can beat uh, these guys. So just make sure that you can get there before them. If uh, he's going for the pass, because it's a little bit obvious. And it looks like he's trying to do drill. So as soon as you see him drop it in front of his car, then he's going for a solo play. So then you should back off instead of. Um, boosting, just stay where you are and be able to support his solo play. Okay, a nice high touch. Um, and just kind of lacking the control to execute that, like if you're going to go for that, um, we just need a little bit more control, ball control there. This is a little bit weird because um, he's coming straight back, so it's likely that he's going to want to come in. Um, so if you're going to come for this challenge, you need to do it fast so that he sees you and then rotates out. And also you want to make sure that you actually hit this ball because if you don't, he's going to have an awkward time getting a save or getting something that crosses in front of the net um, because of he'd be rotating this way. So um, just be aware of that. So he can't end up coming in anyway, so it's kind of a double commit. So make sure you're watching uh, how your teammate's rotating, and if he's cutting you in rotation, just let him cut you. That way the that way the rotation is kind of preserved, in a sense, because if you if you try to challenge, like if you don't let him cut you, then you end up with double commit most of the time. So um, letting your teammate cut you off is usually better than. Um, then a double commit, I would say. Um, but normally he would rotate behind you, but you won't see that a whole lot until much higher ranks where people are rotating properly. So, uh, this is a little bit awkward. Um, I guess somebody gets it eventually. And then don't go back here. I don't know why you're going back. Teammates on an offensive push, you should be coming in to support that. 
There's no reason to go back. Even if you only have 22 boost, you can pick up this boost, this boost, maybe one of these up here. So you can get easily up to at least 50 or 60 boost just by pushing up field. So there's no reason to go back here. I'm going to support the offensive pressure. Um, teammates back pass. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. And then here would be a good time to use a half flip. Uh, which is a more advanced mechanic, but it allows you to basically uh, flip your car backwards, and then what you do is you cancel the backflip uh, with a flip cancel, and then you use an air roll to um, rotate your car so that you're essentially you're facing this way. Um, so that's something that you can look up is um, half flip mechanic. That's an example of where you would use that to recover a little bit faster. Again, this is a uh, where you would use the half flip. So you do a back flip, and uh, basically a half flip is a way so that you can back flip, but your car ends up facing this way. Um, and then you could obviously take position there. Still going backwards for some reason. Like at this point, once you've landed, you can just turn. You don't need to keep backing up here. It's a little risky, like they're beating you here, so I wouldn't be pushing up that far. Yeah, so you get scored on because of it. So, <clears throat> like teammate miss. Like this guy's definitely beating you, or one of them's definitely beating you. So yeah, this you can see they're much closer to the ball. Um, they're much closer to the ball than you, so. Uh, if you push up here, it's only going to end badly for you. Generally, if the rule of thumb for challenging is if they're closer than you, uh, don't go. That's like the rule of thumb because if they're closer, then they're probably going to get there first. Um, obviously, there might be some exceptions to that, but you can just keep that in mind. So if you just shadow there instead of challenging, you can just turn. So if you're just facing the other way, he gets a weak shot, goes this way, and then you just turn in, get possession. Might even counterattack because they're pushing this way. So if you just let them hit the ball to you instead of coming up, then you can get a free, free possession instead of getting scored on. All tied up, 40 seconds left. Um, one thing you can do here on kickoff, um, instead of that, instead of just full boosting, uh, you can actually start to go forward a little bit off the kickoff, and then you can use a front flip to gain a little bit more speed. And then you can flip into the ball again once you're right in front of the ball. And what that does is, like I kind of mentioned earlier, using flips um, to gain speed when you have uh, zero speed um, helps to conserve your boost. So that way when you land here, um, instead of having zero boost, you might have like anywhere from like 5 to 12. Um, and then that way, whatever happens off kickoff, you can recover a little bit faster because you can use that extra boost as a resource. You can either use it to get to this boost pad faster, or you can use it to make a challenge um, on the ball. So it's usually good to have a little bit of boost off of kickoff. And if you do it correctly, you won't really lose anything. Like you, the ball, like this, not, they're not going to get there faster than you um, because the flip kind of gives you that momentum um, instead of the boost. So, like with that, we used our flip there. Good use of flipping here. And then try and turn here. You can probably beat him if you jump right here and then flip to the side uh, into the ball. It'll go off this way. Uh, but you have to go kind of fast because he's also there. So, Okay, good. Good. And then um, I think if uh, flipping to the left here may have been slightly better, but he backed off, so it's fine. Okay. 
Get down off the wall here, start flipping. Good. Okay, good. Now get the boost. Good. Get shot. Okay. Okay, we have time here to turn in and try to make a play. Now, if you're going to bang it off the wall, you want to make sure you can follow it up. So, we're kind of running low on the time here. So, if you do hit it into the wall, you just want to, you might need to slow down a little bit so that when it bounces out, you can actually turn and then follow it and get a shot. Um, but I think we might be going a little too fast for that. Oh, we just kind of missed. Yeah, so that's just uh, something you can work on with your mechanics. Um, just uh, practicing, uh, really just uh, turning and hitting the ball. So, like, I can send you some stuff for, like, free play or custom training. That will just help you. And you really just have to practice, like, every day or whenever you play. Just uh, spend some time in free play or custom training and just work on hitting the ball like as fast as you can and working on your turns and like tracking uh so i can send you a couple of videos of examples of how to do that okay so over time <coughs> i see this is a 15 minute video i hope it's not a 15 minute overtime Okay. Wow, teammate almost got that. And this is another great example of where you would half flip. Um, again, it's a way of using a back flip to turn your car around so that you'd actually be facing forward here. Um, that's something that you probably want to learn. Uh, and that ends up being the game. So, yeah, um, it seems like. Uh, and this is not a mechanic that would I would typically see gold players using but I I know at least three scenarios in this game where it would have helped you out and I think two of those would have prevented a goal so it can be quite useful and you might have just pushed up a little bit too far here just um, stay a little bit further back maintain the spacing there because you see that he's going like a teammates going so we don't need really to push up so far so that um because they're closer so if you do push up too far and they get past you um then there's no one back so uh, again just kind of being that anchor at midfield keeping anything from getting past so that your teammate has time to recover and rotate behind you And he did a pretty good touch there with his um, flip. Uh, wouldn't have uh, necessarily been a problem if uh, you were able to recover out of that. But since we weren't, it ended up being a, a goal. <laughs> but pretty close game all around. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so that's the end of that um, replay. And uh, I'll say the main things for you to work on are one, to uh, learn how to do uh, your recoveries a little better, learn how to do um, like a half flip to get out of those awkward scenarios where you've pushed up too far so you can get back quickly. Um, two, uh, make sure you're maintaining good spacing with your teammate. Uh, make sure you're not encroaching on his option coverage. Um, allow your teammates to cut you off um, so you're not double committing. Just in general being aware of where your teammates are at. Um, and kind of being that anchor at midfield to make sure that um, nothing gets passed. Um, now, a lot of these, uh, I didn't. You might be wondering, like, how 
you can like score if you're always um like if you're not going for the shots you're not going for midfield but it's all about just maintaining pressure and not going for challenges that you're gonna lose or put you in a bad spot um so if you maintain constant pressure keeping the ball past midfield like on the other side and you're taking their boost um, basically eventually they will make a mistake um, or eventually they will run out of boost um, so basically trying to force uh, the other team to kind of crumble under that pressure um, so that was pretty much it and, and in, in terms of mechanics um, I think there was I think fixing some of your positioning error will also help with your mechanics because you'll have more time to make decisions instead of just like always rushing the ball. Um, trying to get more control uh, should help you. Um, so start working on like dribbling. Um, start working on uh, your aerial mechanics a little bit more. You probably learn like fast aerial um as well could help you i didn't see where in that game where it would help you a whole lot but in the future um uh, so yeah what i'll do for the mechanics is i'll just link you some uh training packs and some tutorials that should help you um that you can work on um yeah so that's pretty much it uh went a little bit over time here trying to get used to the drawing tool but yeah hopefully that was helpful and uh, i'll make sure to get this sent your way thanks bye bye